Hello everyone, welcome back to Morning Shot and today we're going to talk about our favorite ginger stepchild that we love to beat on. It's gone. It is not in a good position as you might well know. At the time of recording we still like stage 6, stage 4, stage whatever blackouts or decolonized electricity as we prefer to call it and therefore ESCOM is the need of help and they've agreed that they need help so the way to help ESCOM according to ESCOM of course is well to bring back all the very people that made ESCOM work in the first place i.e. and you have to read between the lines in the article white engineers. Baron this is very interesting because you're a business owner I'm a business owner when we bring ideology into a business and that ideology detracts from the business, it's a good idea to drop the ideology and go back to what was working. Uh, Gillette found this out the hard way. ESCOM is finding out the hard way. So in general, we do agree on the premise that, yes, bring skilled people back into ESCOM. That might be a good idea. Yeah, and if you think about it logically, so the article goes on to say that they weren't just getting skilled individuals, they were getting skilled individuals who were responsible for the design and the initial creation of the ESCOM network. Yep. I suppose that makes sense. If you're going to get somebody to work on a classic car, the designer of the classic car, probably the best person to get. So it's by inference, you could say, well, there must be white individuals. Now, we know that Praveen Godon has in the past said that the ANC government needs to be a little bit careful with uh, BEE because in the process of getting BEE and chucking out the experienced, that's how he describes them, he describes them as the experienced individuals, you have the ability, in his words, to cause the state-owned enterprise to go bankrupt and to be seen unvi as unviable in the eyes of the public. Once it goes, becomes deemed unviable in the eyes of the public, according to Praveen, this makes him look, or should we say the government look, inept, that it makes him look incompetent, which in turn undermines the national democratic revolution. So from that perspective, don't exactly. think like Praveen's one of us. He's not one of us, but he just happens to recognize that the fast trace of B, the fast pace of BE isn't really in the best interest of the country. So what becomes interesting about this, Ramon, is that it does seem like they have now told the rater that you need to fix this this clown show get back the old the old god the people that actually know how to implement this stuff let's see if we can get it done mm. which i suppose to the free market the free marketeer is a victory because it's like okay well what they're doing is they're dropping the ideas of be all whilst they're implementing the be amendment act which is going to give another minister a clownish right to dictate quotas on private on private business so it's kind of like it's a victory in one element, but the clown show that led to the collapse in the first place is still happening in another element. So it's kind of like... Well, don't here's know. the thing. I disagree with everything that you said. I think bringing back skills into ESCOM is actually terrible because it prolongs ESCOM and prolongs the National Democratic Revolution. Because remember, let me just come back to us for a moment. Praveen Gordon and the commies hated Jacob Zuma. They supported him originally against Tabo Mbeki because Tabo Mbeki was a neoliberal bastard. So they brought in Jacob Zuma and they thought they could control Zuma to fully affect the National Democratic Revolution. But what the commies really hate is corruption. What the commies really hate is state capture of the sort that we've seen because those mm. things prevent the National Democratic Revolution. They yeah, undermine the National mm. Democratic Revolution, which is why Praveen took Zuma out of office through the Gupta leaks and various other ways. That's why he's seen as the hero against state capture. Praveen wants state capture but his style of state capture, which is a communist utopia. So in essence, what Fravin is saying, he's using the balance of forces to say, listen, let's bring in the old people back into ESCOM, those who built it, those who know what they're doing, because in essence, it will prolong ESCOM. It won't cause, you know, it won't, it will undermine the failure of ESCOM. I think it's a little too late, and I think he's aware of that now because he has to let go of his own ideology for this to happen. But from the perspective of the, the, the shareholders and the perspective of the unions and all that, these people desperately need ESCOM to work, even if it means bringing in white people from 20 years ago that they kicked out. Yeah. Look, the difficulty is going to be for ESCOM is, is this, is that there's a number of, as we all know, you know, when we talk about the National Democratic Revolution, what it basically means is bigger government, smaller private enterprise. So 
if you're going to have a bigger government, the government needs to be able to self-sustain. Anybody who's ever run a business understands that. In other words, you need to be able to balance your books. And what we have in ESCOM is we have the ability, they don't have the ability to do that. They've got over 400 billion in debt. The books cannot be balanced and the infrastructure is aging. You can't exactly charge more for electricity because the infrastructure doesn't support it. And so what you have is you have a bloated workforce that's relying on it, because remember the government employs, according to ANC ideology, you've got a bloated workforce earning bloated wages. And what that essentially means is that the unions are relying on those employees to be there because the unions are paid by subsidy from the employees. So if there's no employees, there's no union because there's no subsidization occurring. So given that the government's heavily in bed with the unions, specifically Kasatu and a number of others, it doesn't look good for the government's, should we say, strategic partner if their own kind of coffers, their own kind of financial stability and, and viability going forward is called into question. Because what happens if ESCOM goes down and you find all these workers without employment, you find them without paychecks? And I think we've already seen this as some state-owned enterprises, specifically, you know, there's the arms manufacturer. We know of some very famous individuals that have said on camera about how they have to now live in their car and they they never get paid and some of them haven't been paid for six months doesn't look good for the unions does it because the unions still want to eat at the trough so they need to save escom in order to save face but i think escom is also now being deemed to be like the face of the government if escom fails government fails absolutely so they know like it's now showing them up to be i mean we know they're useless and everything else we've seen it but ESCOM is really kind of like the coal face now. It's the shop window. It is. It's the, the determining factor of ANC survival. And also, thankfully, what uh, this article says, uh, ironically perhaps, is that the artisan training system was very important for the apartheid regime. So credentials was important. You have to go to university and be an engineer and all that. But you always start at the bottom of a state-owned enterprise and you worked your way to the top. Jan Oberholzer, who's the CEO, has been there for, for decades, I think. He's like the last guy who at ESCOM knows what he's doing for the most part due to that sort of artisanal training and due to that experience. But what the ANC did in 1998, they did the Skills Development Act, which basically undermined internships all over the place. So now you, for an intern, you need to pay them like an ordinary employee. You can't fire them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially, the Skills Development Act, which the ANC put in, meant the discontinuation of artisan training, artisan training, rather. And of course, News24 says this wasn't the intention of the Skills Development Act, but we know that it was because by, by doing away with internships, the unions wanted more members and interns cannot be union members because it's not, it's not a formal employment job. It's a learning skill development job. But once the apartheid regime and the in, artisanal in, in, internship and training went out the window, hey, hey, Bresto, we got a lot of people with really cool degrees who don't fuck all about what they are doing. And that's essentially yeah. the ANC policy in a nutshell, which they are now trying to reverse. Yeah, and it's it's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because this is exactly what we've seen right around the country. You know, right across Europe, they have these things called zero-hour contracts. So zero-hour contracts are basically, I pay you for the hours that you work. If I don't need you, I don't pay you. You say that to an ANC minister, and they're like, no, 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 you can't have that. Like, that's, that's unfair labor practice. You have to have a minimum number of, of hours. Oh, by the way, once you have those minimum number of hours, the, per, the person's a permanent employee anyway, so you might as well just pay him. They kind of like strangle you through those means. They're even trying to do it with domestic workers and garden workers and, you know, other, should we say, ad hoc laborers. And the key reason for all of it is because once you get somebody on a fixed term employment, then that opens that person up to the ability to join the union. So that's really kind of what it comes down to. The ANC is trying to bolster up union representation because the unions are a key partner in the Tripartite Alliance. But that being said, None of the workers are now in employment, which means that they don't have members for the Tripartite Alliance anyway. And the reason they don't have that is because the unions have been made too powerful. And coincidentally, that's exactly what we see now at ESCOM. ESCOM yeah. has strikes everywhere because the unions are too powerful. They've got an illegal strike. And one of the people commented on our, our video around ESCOM being dead. And they said, well, why don't they hold the, the unions accountable for the illegal strike? Mm -hmm. And as, as we said, even on that, you can't, you can't hold the union accountable to their strike. 
not because you can't legally, but because if you try to delay it, we're already in blackouts. You delay it any further, the blackouts get worse. And then you antagonize them and they burn down key infrastructure, which means that the blackouts get worse. So it really is a case of the government has to negotiate with the terrorists. They don't have an option. Well, and but, that's because of union strength. But ironically, the government and the terrorists are one and the same in this particular regard. Very much so. But I mean, in conclusion, I think this is a, a good step for ESCOM, good step in hypothetical, whatever this is called. Um, but to me, too little, too late. And most importantly, the people that are coming back who know what they're doing are now mentors. They are training existing people, but you're not solving the fundamental issue, which is BE and K yeah. deployment and overstaffing and, and, and. This is, this is a typical Ramaphosa reform where you tinker on the edges of the foundational problem without ever solving yeah. the foundational problem. So, I mean, good luck to Dereta. We are not fans, but we think he's trying his best, but this is not going to solve any issues uh, in the short, medium, or long term at all. No. So there we go. Yeah. You can you can kind of get a feel for it, and we joked about this before. You can get a feel for what's going to happen, and I think we all know what's going to happen. That you know, Jan's going to come back, and he's going to say to Sipo, "Hey, Sipo, you do it like this." Sipo is going to do it wrong, and Jan's going to be like, "Ah, Sipo, full tech," and he'll do it himself. Sipo's then going to go, oh, look at these white racists. They're not going to get it. They're not doing this. They're undermining me. Ah, oh, these white racists, something, something, something. And it's just going to become a massive race issue. And it's going to undermine the whole thing anyway. Then you're going to have Sipo kind of going around and he's probably going to sabotage the industry. We've seen this already. I mean, this happened yeah. when the when was employed. Well, I think what's going to happen is these mentors are going to come in. The problems will still happen. And then the mentors will be blamed. And that's it. Very possibly that will happen too, which so, also happened when Dorita came in. Exactly, exactly. So it's probably a trap for the most part. So it's not even a solution. So ignore the first half of this video. <laughs> we just make it up as we go along, you know. That's what analysis is, man. Doesn't mean we always write, huh? But it's exactly. like it's a it's a tough one to see. You can see that they're just clutching at straws now. They're just like, what can we do left? But look, it's it's. Depending on how you view this, it's either a positive thing to go, oh, look, they've got some skilled people in to fix it. But it's also a little bit delusional to think that it can be fixed at this point in time. Like the culture inside of it, the employment culture, the union power, like even the infrastructure itself, can it be saved? I'm skeptical, mate, but hopefully the rate will prove me wrong. Huh? Like no. I really... Hopes and prayers to the guys. We we like him not because he's a Wati or any other other reason. We like him because he's a true patriot. You know, news came out today as well. The guy hasn't had a pay rise in two years, and you like who? He's only like five million a year to overview Eskom, which in pounds is like two hundred fifty thousand pound. Man, like you can earn a, that money doing far easier things. And for a guy that has to have twenty four seven armed security and you know, has to be called a white racist every other day and his name's all over newspapers. Like, the guy's a true patriot. And so I admire him for his his patriotic nature, nothing more. But uh, he does seem like a yeah. sucker for punishment. Huh? Yeah, but it's too little too late in my estimation. And ESCOM will be the downfall of the ANC, irrespective of... It, it, you okay. can bring in Lee Kuan Yew tomorrow and it won't be fixed in five years. Nope. Simple as that. Anyway, on that downer, thank you for watching. We'll see you very soon. Thanks, everyone. Just, Take just. It easy. Bye.